seven, eight, nine, ten dot three dot three. <laughs> Where is ten dot three dot three, guys? <laughs> Welcome tonight to Berry Flow Upstream. I guess uh, Blaze has the answer to that, right? I saw some post on Crackberry. Was that an update of an old post or is that a new post? This is basically an update of an old post because uh, new version number essentially got certified, which generally indicates that an update is actually coming. But with 10.3.3, it's kind of kind of speculative because there was an even earlier build that got certified earlier, anyways, and it never actually got released. So you know. It was kind of interesting watching the people comment on it, though, because there was, like, I don't know, however many comments that were already posted, and it was an update, and people were like, well, we already knew this. It's like, did you even read the update? <laughs> <laughs> no, you just read the headline, and then you commented. <laughs> kind of amusing. Yeah. Always happens. Always happens. With 10.3.3, I'm... I want to see the update and I wonder if maybe the different version numbers we're seeing certified are like different build numbers for different devices you know maybe there's three or four NIAP certified versions of their OS to cover kind of the majority of them or or maybe they're just doing a consolidated focus on a couple devices either way good to see the news good to see like there's still something churning kind of about that because you know, <laughs> a lot of people are I'm kind of wondering where it is. I've seen a lot of people, honestly, on Twitter, on, on the channels, and I've even had some Facebook contacts who are posting more and more about BB10, like, dang, this is a really good phone, you know, an OS. I picked up my classic. I'm loving it. And people are feeling nostalgic. And I think it's a good time to put 10.3.3 out and kind of maybe give one last bit of life to, to 10, BlackBerry 10, you know what I'm saying? At least in the mind share, because obviously the, the, the consolidated focus is on Android right now. But Blaze, when 10.3.3 launches, like, could you see yourself going back to use it as a daily driver, or are you comfortable with where you are on Android? Yeah, I'm pretty comfortable where I am on Android. I mean, obviously we're not expecting a whole lot from 10.3.3, but if there is something new and substantial there, then obviously I'll check it out and give it a go, but I'm pretty comfortable on Android and I mean, I know I know what the situation is with BlackBerry 10, and I don't know if I could, you know, go through my daily processes and, and revamp those situations again to be able to sort of, you know, hop out of the Android ecosystem now. Um, I've integrated everything Android into my daily process. It would it would be it would be a lot of work and a lot of effort to actually revert back to it, and then sort of, you know, have to see if some of those Google apps that I use, if I can get them to work, if they're, you know, gonna have to deal with workarounds, whatever. I'm not I'm not very big on the workaround situation anymore. I mean back back I don't know, like when Blackberry Ten launched, even like earlier than that, like when I first started getting into Blackberry devices and stuff like that, I was all into like the workarounds and the hacks and the you know, changing the themes and changing your ALX files and getting different themes and all that stuff. But man, like honestly, I'm <laughs> I'm like ten years into this stuff now, and I just want my stuff to work. You yeah. know what I mean? I don't want to I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to don't want to have to hack it. Don't want to have to deal with working around things that should just simply work. I just want stuff to to work the way that it's supposed to. And I don't know. I feel like BlackBerry's version of Android does that for me. So. So for everyone out there, as Blaze is talking about his Android experience, I actually got the Tech 50 device or 60 device, thanks thanks to some people at BlackBerry hooking it up. But I'm, I've been hesitant in actually going over to the device because uh, I'm on a Samsung right now. I have the DTEC 60. I'm gonna like go try it out for a trial period and see how it goes. But I'm I'm leery about the whole idea of this BlackBerry software experience because when Blaze talks about something like, you know, the BlackBerry experience is good enough for me, I mean, almost every phone that runs Android has an experience that could be considered good for somebody out there, right? So yeah. if I'm looking at what's unique about the DTEC 60, right? I, I, the only thing I can really say is security, right? The security pedigree and the security integration into other systems. Like, I think that's 
that is what BlackBerry is truly, truly selling on the, something like the DTEK 60, where the rest is just it, kind of uninspiring, right? I mean, there's not a lot going on, especially on like a DTEK 60 or a Priv that I don't get through the BlackBerry Hub Plus suite of applications that's available. I mean, aside from the keyboard, there's nothing like unique and proprietary anymore. And maybe that's what makes it good to license. Alex, what are some of your thoughts on that? Obviously, with like, we have a new pedigree of Android yeah. from Google on the Pixel, right? We've talked about that before. But BlackBerry has a like, unique kind of sub-variant. They almost have like a niche within Android that they're going at. Yeah. Do you think maybe they've kept it simple for licensing purposes or that they just don't really know where to go yet? No, I mean, I, I think realistically they're trying to get into a position where they can just get the average consumer to understand like, hey, you can go to any phone and get the hub. And I guess this moment happened the other day, uh, Thanksgiving actually, I was at, with my aunt and she was, she's frustrated with the Priv because she's still having some service problems. And she was looking at my phone and she's like, oh, so like, you know, that looks a lot like my phone. I said, it, it is very similar to your phone. I said, it's Android. She's like, wait a minute. So like, where do I get to the hub? And I was like, oh, it's right over here. She's like, wait, how's the hub on your phone? I said, it's just a piece of software. Like any Android phone has it. And it started to click with her. She's like, oh, wait, so like it, I could buy any phone. She's like, wait a minute. So, so you're saying that I understand Android. And I said, yeah, like, she's like, oh, I thought I just knew Blackberry. And it's like, no, you're like, you understand Android. And it finally clicked with her. So now she may get another. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's funny because, like, realistically, because now she can go get an Android phone, and the first thing she's gonna do is put the hub on it and other BlackBerry services on it. So in 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 my mind, like, that's the perfect BlackBerry customer for. I guess realistically, that's that's the perfect BlackBerry customer for BlackBerry. They don't need to buy a BlackBerry phone, but they're gonna use all of BlackBerry's services because they're so used to it, and they want the hub because they're used to it. Um, so, I don't know, they'll keep licensing simple so they can do things like this and not necessarily need to sell a phone to get someone on the hub suite and hope that they can get someone to, to you know, pay them monthly for these services as well. I think my aunt could justify it at, at a certain point. If I told her, you have to spend a dollar a month to get, you know, the hub on your phone and you don't have to get a BlackBerry phone, then she'd be like, oh. Which that's... is arguably their end goal anyway. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think one of the things you... you really hit on the nose for me, Alex, is two points, right? If I look at, like, the competition for what Hub is on Android, I'm looking at, like, Newton, you know, Cloud Magic. I'm looking at, like, a yeah. solution like that where the premium tier is, like, what, 50 bucks a year yeah. or something like that? It like, is. it's kind of expensive. And when you compare that over to what BlackBerry is offering, I mean, it's it's pretty robust, and I wish more people knew about it. Uh, even in that point, what you were speaking, Alex, something that harkened back to me was proof of concept it's like what blackberry right now is doing with the priv with the d tech line of smartphones is they're doing a proof of concept for what their version of android looks like and what the security around that how that implementation goes so i think really if you look at a d tech 60 device and want to buy it you got to look at it very similar to that but this is like a proof of concept for blackberry to show what they want to do with android what i i think am, am stuck between right now is like I love BlackBerry, but I want more of the productivity that I'm used to getting on things like BB10, or even like you know I'm used to getting in in like a BlackBerry built you know Android type experience like Priv. Like Priv with the keyboard gave you more. Like you had the keyboard shortcuts and like unique things about that device that you just could not get anywhere else. Right, the keyboard being a massive and large piece of all of that, but. Then you go to another device, you know, or even a free app in Google Play, and you can get these supplemental things to add on to your experience and get pretty close to any type of thing you could want, you know? Alex, you showed me Action Launcher, yeah. you know, a couple months ago, and I'm just blown away. I was like, there's so much I could do, but then BlackBerry has a very small, light, simplistic launcher that works fairly well. As a proof of concept, do you guys think that this entry and foray into Android is being successful for BlackBerry at this point? Or do you think they need to continue doing more? Like, at least as I go across different devices, and Alex, maybe you're experiencing something similar on yours, uh, just tough to see where the productivity comes in. Like, for instance, the productivity tab on my DTEK60 device just doesn't have enough there. It just yeah. connects to Hub. It doesn't yes. do anything else. Whereas the Edge on this Samsung does 
too much. You know what I'm saying? And even if BlackBerry would have just add a couple more features here and there and increase the productivity, I think it would be a little bit more of a unique offering as opposed to this kind of flat basic security and, and, and usable uh, experience. Blaze, what are some of your thoughts on that, man? Do you think they should go that route or just kind of go to licensing and, and let it be and kind of keep the the investment in their Android endeavor minimal? I don't know, man. I think, I think well, it comes down to two things realistically. It comes down to what I would like them to see or what I would like to see them do and basically what I think that they're going to do. I mean, realistically, I would like them to go ahead and continue putting out, you know, beautiful hardware and, you know, not not necessarily continue on with the 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 production that they have going. I want the I want actual BlackBerry hardware back again. But I know that that's not going to happen. That's not realistic at this point. That's not in John Chen's playbook at all, right? <laughs> ha, 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 ha. <laughs> um I know that's not going to happen. That's not that's not a realistic thought process. Like it's just not. It's not nowhere near it, right? However, I mean, with the progress that they've made with everything thus far, I think I think that they've done good thus far, and I want them to go ahead and continue um, sort of expanding what they can do with their Android ecosystem and the apps that they have created. However, I don't necessarily, I, I don't know where the line is to, to be able to determine on whether or not they've actually been successful towards it, or even if they're generally just looking for success. Like, do they want praise for it? Like, yeah, do they, do they, do they even care at this point that they, you know, get any sort of recognition for what they've done, or is it just something that they're doing and they're continuing to go through, uh, you know, the process of it because they know that that's essentially one way that they can go ahead and just make some money back on the on the solutions. I don't know. I don't know where that line of success is, or what they consider a, a degree of success, or even what other people consider a degree of success. I think, I think at this point, the software portion of it, in terms of the smartphone, just sort of exists. Is there? Uh, they're continuing on with it. I would hope that they continue to improve it, um, because, you know, we, I don't. I don't want this to end up like one of the many other things that BlackBerry has done, where they they've gotten so far into it and then all of a sudden they pull back out and they're like no nah, we're done with that like i think that would be i think that would be very problematic especially at this point because there's a lot of a lot of angry blackberry 10 users that are out there they're just genuinely feel left behind by blackberry mm -hmm. at this point right and you know sometimes sometimes i have thoughts about that and i'm like why are you mad like how can you be upset about this situation like BlackBerry survived? But at the same time, these are genuine fans who have gone ahead. They've been with the company for years. They've invested in the company by buying their devices and wishing more for the company and wishing nothing but the best. So it's, you know, it's kind of hard to harp on them and say, look, man, just go buy a, a BlackBerry Android device because, you know, at the same time, they bought into BlackBerry 10. And now they have the notion of, well, if I buy a BlackBerry Android device, is that going to last me for however long, right? And yeah. it's, a, it's, it's a pretty tricky tricky predicament that BlackBerry has sort of placed themselves into. And, and really, I just, uh, at the end of the day, I hope that they continue on with what it is that they're doing in terms of the licensing and the software. I hope, I hope that the message that, you know, the, we're putting the, the, the smart in the smartphone and the software and stuff like that is actually a realistic message. But I want them to continue on with that. I want them to do good in that area and I want them to continue to improve it because if it really does come down to it at some point in time where I'm not going to be able to buy essentially a BlackBerry device, I don't want to lose the things that BlackBerry has essentially brought to the table. You know what I mean? Like the BlackBerry Hub, it is awesome. There's no two ways about it. The BlackBerry Hub is you can you can pick it apart. You can pick apart all the things that are wrong with it in its current state, or you can compare it to like BlackBerry Ten, whatever. the The truth of the matter is, is that for me personally, there's nothing out there right now that is available that is on the exact same level and offers me the exact same sort of solutions. And I enjoy this solution. Like you were saying, um, Alex introduced you to Action Launcher Three. 
I myself have used Action Launcher 3. I used it on my DTEC 50 for the most part. But when I got my DTEC 60, it was one of those things where I was like, I'm perfectly fine with this. There's, there's Again, there's a few things that I can complain about, like the inability to hide apps, you know, stupid apps that you download, um, stupid icons, like the, the BlackBerry Launcher doesn't include that. However... I Someone have, hide Bumble, please. <laughs> yeah, I have I have put forth my complaints, and my complaints have been heard. So, um, hopefully, at some point in time, it, it will it will be added. Um, I even you know it was a long long conversation about here are the amount of apps that can do it. Here is why it would be beneficial for you guys to do it, and here is what I want to see. So I I. I genuinely put forth those complaints to people who can actually address them, and hopefully it will be addressed at some point. Um, but you know, it's one of those things. It, it just it offers me everything that I want, and you know, if it comes down to it at some point in time, like I said, I hope that BlackBerry continues with that because if I can no longer buy a BlackBerry branded device or you know a BlackBerry partnership device, whatever the case may be, if that hardware is not what I want it to be. I still want to be able to go ahead and purchase these things directly through Google Play on some other device, whether it be you know a Pixel Two or whatever the case may be. Right? I, I still want that that BlackBerry experience, and I think it, I think it would be genuinely a shame if that experience yeah. disappeared on its own. I totally hear you, man. One of the things I think BlackBerry would be it'd be cool to see BlackBerry do, and what kind of gave me the idea was following the developer event, the developer summit that was held at the NASDAQ stock market headquarters in New York City, uh, I thought to myself, it's like, well, BlackBerry obviously can't do everything, right? We get that. We understand. What I would like them to do is maybe just go out into the Android ecosystem, find some key partners in different areas, and just bring their application stock on your devices and maybe teach them a thing or two about how to build secure apps or how to integrate those apps with BlackBerry's secure platform that they have you know here's how you can connect your app to watch docs or connect your app to the good for work you know and, and all these other uh, little additions that they have in the software platform because then out of the box you'd get a much more robust experience on both sides and blackberry from a productivity standpoint is a curator of of services for us and i think that would be really cool and that's kind of a little bit of what i was hoping was happening at that event that they held on november 17th because that's really really cool stuff the fact that they're still out there trying to engage developers and what their unique value uh, you know, is and that can be brought over uh, to BlackBerry, I think that's awesome. Like, just Alex, imagine instead of BlackBerry like, going and building a uh, you know, file manager, they just partner with Solid Explorer and had it preloaded, you know, the pro yeah. version. And, yeah. you know, you're buying into more than just the phone. You're buying into a productivity engine and all of that that could potentially bring for you. It's tough though, right? It seems like they got a blank slate right now with their version of Android. It's what's to come next, you know? Is it at a point now where you just give it to a partner and the partner will put apps on and you're just, you know, pulling in some licensing fees? Or are they going to have any thought into what else is put on these devices? Definitely something I think is worth mentioning as well as along line this conversation with BBM launching two new services in Indonesia next month, BBM Shopping and BBM Travel. I think the uh, the terminology here would be like that escalated quickly, right? <laughs> They're going hard in the paint over there uh, in Indonesia. There's a there's a lot in here, honestly. You can definitely well, check Crackberry out. Just to, yeah, just to clear up something in that post itself, and realistically, part of I don't know. I guess part of it is my fault because I didn't necessarily. Actually, I'm not gonna. No, I'm not gonna take the L on that. It's BlackBerry's fault for burying it in the story itself. Um, but if you look at that actual story, um, one of the things, I, I highlighted the two new services because they're new. Obviously, people, people are interested in the new things. However, if you actually look at that blog post, um, one of the biggest things that came out of, out of the conversation when I posted that was that they need to expand the services internationally. And again, I don't know if that was was something where people just didn't necessarily read the full blog post, just read the headline and you know comment it, whatever the case may be. Um, but one of the main comments that basically came from that was they need to expand these services internationally and make them beyond 
Indonesia. But one of the main lines in that actual blog post is, next, we're gearing up to extend both games and news beyond Indonesia to our markets globally. So it, it was noted in the actual article that they plan on doing this. They didn't, they didn't say where. And they didn't necessarily say, yeah, it's going to be available in the U.S. and Canada and we're bringing all these great games. But they did note. So it's definitely on their mind, right? So, yeah, you know, the, the main highlight for me there was the BBM shopping because it's new and the BBM travel because it's new. But within the context of the actual article, they did definitely note that they're going to be bringing these services, you know, further places and... Hopefully that does include uh, the U.S. and Canada and everywhere else that it finds these applicable. Because one of the one of the the things in the whole in the in in the context of the whole conversation was that hey, that game is really really cool. I would like to try it, but I can't download it because it's not available. Or hey, I would like to be able to go ahead and post videos to my BBM channel too, but I can't because it's region locked or whatever. Right, so there there are people out there who genuinely want to try and use these services, but they're just simply not available. And I hope, I hope that, you know, somewhere within that, that numbers and all the data that they're pulling in, that some of this stuff is being, you know, con considered. Because I would totally play that rogue life game. I'm not gonna lie. I downloaded it, basically through my APK downloader, and I played it. I played it for hours. I didn't understand a damn word because it was like, <laughs> but I played it. And really, if it was in English, that probably would have encapsulated me more into the game because then I could understand it, right? But right then and there, that's that's somebody who wouldn't necessarily be downloading stuff that is getting getting BBM pushed to the forefront. I didn't, you know, utilize any of the BBM services or anything like that that are, you know, I wasn't sharing my scores or anything on BBM because what's the point, right? The majority of the people that I talked to wouldn't be able to download it anyway. But, you know, that it's a prime example of that there are people out there that are willing to and wanting to actually try these services out. They're just not available. So yeah. I think I think that they really should go ahead and expand it as much as humanly possible, right? And I, I totally get it. I get that they're they're basically using Indonesia as a test bed, but again, within the context of the article, they actually said that, you know, next we're gearing up to extend both games and news beyond Indonesia to our other markets globally. And I truly hope that some of that stuff actually includes the US and Canada because I think it would be beneficial. Um, the other thing that they noted was that like uh, the game is downloaded some of the game is downloaded like over 100,000 downloads within the first few days quickly became the, one of the top five games on Google Play um, that was for Fruits Mania yep. and they had they basically had such such a good response from the games that they put out and the services that they put out aside from that that they're they're actually ramping up even more games so they're continuously going to be pushing out games so that's really really interesting and you know I don't I don't know what that equates to profit wise but even just from a brand recognition perspective it's good to have that sort of integration um, one of the things that I noticed while I was going through is that Rogue Life itself, the game, and Fruits Mania, both of those games are available without BBM integration. You can download them without BBM integration. You don't need to have the BBM portion of it. But the fact that people were going ahead and grabbing the BBM version versus the other versions, that I think that shows to um, you know some of the brand loyalty that yeah. BBM itself still has, and they they really need to to. You know, extend that and bring it to as many people as possible because, you know, even even if BBM isn't necessarily as big as what it once was, there's still the opportunity there to expand it and, and bring more more recognition to the brand because I, I, as terrible as it sounds, I don't I don't think BBM itself is beat up as much in the way of brand recognition as what BlackBerry is. You know what I mean? Like they, mm -hmm. BlackBerry was entirely right to be able to go ahead and separate the two. 
because BBM is, is sort of, in a way, running as, as its own entity right now. And they're right to do that because you can separate BBM from BlackBerry. You don't. You no longer need to have a BlackBerry to run BBM. And they're, I don't know. That that was a logical move to me. John Chen is full of them. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely interesting to see BBM shopping, BBM travel coming to the Indonesian market along with a bunch of other things. They got music, they got games, top picks, vouchers, all sorts of things for that market. It's pretty robust at this point and if they can get it all built right into the app, you know, they're getting videos and channels and things like that and they can get it all natively within BBM, it's going to be cool. And even if it doesn't expand anytime soon, the fact that it is coming is, is something that's kind of comforting because BBM is a place that's it's tough to, to latch on to, right? And games is a great way to kind of get people to contribute. The fact that they have 100,000 users right off the bat in Indonesia that want to use that service within Discover, you know, within the BBM uh, you know, uh, connection there, I think that's, that's pretty cool. That speaks to me that there is a market there that they need to start working on because you yeah. can make money off of that. It's just yeah. finding your way, so to speak. BBM though along with the rest of it <laughs> there's so many things that it's like yeah that'd be great if it if it happened right one of the things that is happening right now is a Black Friday deal for 53% off devices is actually is that deal still even going on it's a good question I think it still is let me check shop Blackberry real quick uh, I, think it runs, we, uh, I think it runs to the, the 30th right uh, yeah. maybe not the 30th maybe the 28th I don't know you check. Like I wrote it up. <laughs> they are all still on sale. Everything but the DTEC 60, which, all right, I, I get you. I see you, yeah. Blackberry. I see you. The Priv at 299 unlocked is a great deal. I don't care about what AT&T did to the Priv or whatever. You know, <laughs> like I think that's a fantastic deal for that phone because it's a lot of phone. Just like the Passport. Like Passport is a lot of phone. You get a lot out of that hardware. You know, you have a great camera, great speakers, great typing experience. Priv though for two ninety nine, I mean down from highs of seven hundred, uh, and it's sobering to see that price, and the fact that now like the pr the Priv and the Passport are similarly yeah, priced. Funny. Any numbers I'm spewing right now are in U S dollar, just by the way, everyone two twenty nine for a DTEC fifty. I mean, that gets it pretty close to where the idle device it was itself at one ninety nine. I mean thirty dollars for the BlackBerry security. That's a really nice. Uh, you know, price right there. Like, keep that price, BlackBerry, and you're, you'll keep moving units. Like, that's something I think they should definitely keep on doing. Yeah. Keeping these devices as, as mobile as they can in, in the price bracket. It's kind of funny because back when um, I think you or Alex was saying that you were starting to see more people talk about BlackBerry 10. Well, you know why they're talking about BlackBerry 10? It's because they lowered the prices and more yeah. people are buying them. <laughs> yeah. The fact that they still have white leaps left really concerns me. <laughs> Especially because I bought one. So Yeah, that's interesting. I find it also interesting that the DTEC 60 bundle, which is normally, and maybe I'm talking out of my rear of this, but normally those launch bundles are launch bundles, you know, that go along with like the launch of the device. Well, it's still available, which the launch bundle of the DTEC 50, like it was done, like you, it, once it was out, it was out. But that was a pre-order situation too. Is that correct? The DTEC 60 just kind of hit the market. Yeah. Whereas the DTEC 50 had like a little bit of hype. I think I think they like gave a little bit of a pre-order for it, and then of course you could get your uh, your battery charger with it, which, uh, which is pretty cool. So, uh, Alex, are you gonna are you gonna pick up a Priv by BlackBerry? Are you gonna are you gonna go back? Two ninety nine. No, but <laughs> I am glad that I traded it for the Samsung. So. That means I can actually sell it for some more money than the priv. Because like someone right now, offered me money for mine too, and I'm like, eh. it's like yeah. I'm like blazes where it's just like I'll just collect it and I'll use it for you know <sighs> something later. I'm like at that point, so unless I get like the price I want, I'm, I'll probably yeah. hold on to it. And Blaze will probably get it three years from now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we should do, uh, Alex. Let's just hold on to them, and then we'll throw them at Blaze later. <laughs> Did either of you put Nougat on them? So the AT&T ones are straight up locked still. Yeah. And that's that's a really interesting thing to bring up because, and this podcast is like right at that 30-minute mark right now, so we'll try to go into our patron questions here in a moment. But uh, 
one of the things that I find super interesting about the Samsung, and, and yeah, it's bloatware, it's whatever, TouchWiz is not the most pretty elegant thing, like I get all that, but I feel like the security story BlackBerry is selling is one that I think other OEMs are are telling, but not actually like going out of their way to market in, in the way BlackBerry does. And to one end, I think that's great on BlackBerry's part because they've captured that mind share, right? They're constantly doing updates, constantly pushing security. I mean, that's something they need around the messaging of their, their offering. But on this Samsung, AT&T, the slowest carrier in the, in the world probably, pushed me the security uh, patch update for November on like day one. Like it was their zero day basically. And again, that's something BlackBerry took like actually a couple days to put out in the same sense. Uh, so just really interesting, like from a security point, BlackBerry is the one touting it that they're doing this and adding in their own hardening per hand, you know, per chance and, and you know making their own unique uh, bit there, but other OEMs are doing it. We know some aren't, but I get in the latest updates and the bootloader, as Blaze was kind of mentioning, is locked. So I can't go just dump NuGet on it. Like I'd have to probably root the phone and then I could probably do it, maybe. And then there's no guarantees after that, right? So uh, at least once it comes about, it, it'll be there for everybody. And the way the cycle's looking right now, the Samsung S7 line should get NuGet the same time BlackBerry launches their Mercury. So yeah. kind of the beginning of this year. And I think that's kind of a good thing for BlackBerry because it puts them in line with the rest of the market to kind of be putting it out in, in a good sense. And they've spent their time, obviously, hardening the security by, by that point and getting a new device ready in this Mercury. So just kind of interesting. I guess the point is, you know, BlackBerry is selling you on security, but other people are also doing that too, you know, in a, in a similar sense. I mean, Samsung's got their whole Knox secure boot you know, startup, all that same stuff that BlackBerry is offering on theirs. It's like, who do you trust though, right? Yeah. And BlackBerry has the most certifications in this sense. I think one of the most interesting pieces of news that came out this week is that BlackBerry was awarded a Cyber Essentials Plus certification from the UK government. Blaze, I know you wrote this up over on CrackBerry. Was this something that caught your eye as an interesting piece of news? And if so, why? Uh... Well, I mean, it's fairly interesting because the UK has, like, new policies coming into effect for, like, spying on, on their people, I guess. <laughs> um, so it's one of the things, they have new mandates for the government that are basically being rolled out. Like, you can't, you can't run a business unless you actually, like, not run a business. I don't want to say that. That's not right. You can't run certain business offerings unless you actually meet certain criteria and the security essentials criteria like you can't just run a a website online that takes people's money or credit card information or personal personally identifiable information unless you actually start meeting the the criteria and stuff like that um, also it especially like government contractors they all have to meet this criteria now mm -hmm. in order to be authorized as a uh, government contractor so it's something that it basically it, it's another stepping stone another feather in blackberry's cap to be able to go ahead and say that they they are certified for this but i think um pretty much the more important thing um rather than blackberry themselves being a part of it is that um, the the company, the UK company that they purchased or they they acquired, Encryption, is basically an organization that does the certification process for this as well. So if you are a government contractor and you need to go ahead and get certified for it, um, Encryption would be one of the organizations that you go to to be able to go ahead and determine whether or not your your company meets the criteria. Um, to be able to take on a government contract and that's something that you know when it comes to government contracts and businesses and enterprises and stuff like that you're talking big money to be able to go ahead and and get that sort of stuff taken care of right that's not that's not that's generally not pocket change <laughs> um, to be able to go ahead and, and address those situations so yeah I mean it's a huge thing uh, for for them to be certified for it. It's a huge thing for them to be able to go ahead and certify 
others um, in the grand scheme of things. I don't think that it means too much on the lower level. You know, you and I and Alex shouldn't really be concerned about it. But, you know, like I said, it's it's a feather in BlackBerry's cap to be able to go ahead and say that they are among the, the first to be able to go ahead and offer that certification. Um, I think I think it actually started way back in like 2014, maybe even earlier. Vodafone was one of the first mobile companies um, to actually meet the certification uh, within the UK. So it, it's one of those things where, it, you know, if the government's going to put it into into effect and actually start paying attention to it, then it's better to have it than to not have it or have to rely on somebody else for the certification, right? So um, overall, just another another security feather in BlackBerry's cap. Consultancy seems to be a really good place to be especially in that hemisphere where they've, they've got a good propensity maybe to do something very similar in Germany, you know, and in these other co- places where they've made acquisitions and already have established government connections and expand that, you know, to other areas that they work in. I think it's really good. That was, again, super cool for me, seeing that BlackBerry is now accredited to get teach other security, you know, and get them certified. I think that's a very powerful feather in the cap, so to speak, to, to speak to what they're prowess is on the security front so definitely cool to see and I'm sure they're learning so many things too being in all of these different areas having to mitigate so many different types of risks uh, you know throughout all these different organizations is probably what gives them so much validity in the sense to to offer security on the scale they do because they do see way way more of it than you know your average consumer play like an iPhone or you know even a Samsung may so definitely some interesting stuff this week guys we're going to head over into our after show here in just a moment, but I do want to answer a couple of our patron questions. You can always jump on the Patreon bandwagon at any time. Just visit us at berryflow.com forward slash Patreon. We actually have a private BBM channel that I access via the much beloved blackberry dot, dot press URL that uh, Blaze so happily kept up for everybody. And uh, yeah, the desktop manager is like really helpful when <laughs> you don't want to have to, because I don't want to be here like talking to you guys like this, like, oh, okay. Here are the comments. So Rico, who's on a priv right now, says, how important is a potential deal between Huawei and BlackBerry? Is this the next step in hardware and more? Uh, Oh, Huawei. I feel like Huawei doesn't want to pay BlackBerry any attention whatsoever. That's how I feel. Blaze, how do you feel about Huawei? I know they're all in Ottawa and, you know, whatever, Waterloo. That whole area, they're kind of near each other. Does it is it going to be uh, any impact on BlackBerry? Look, man, there's a lot of things that are in Waterloo. Google is in Waterloo, so take it for what it's worth. Apple is in Waterloo. Take it for what it's worth. You know what I mean? You know, it. Waterloo is basically like the Silicon Valley for for Canada. So yeah, I mean, so what? They put up a shop. Is anything going to come out of it? Who knows. Huawei or Huawei was working with um, I think they poached a bunch of employees a few years ago but you know employees transition all the time from different places and you know it's just one of those things so what they set up shop big deal Google set up shop too that doesn't doesn't mean that Google is gonna go ahead and poach every single employee like I said if your technology organization then chances are you're probably looking at and if you're looking at at breaking into into Canada then chances are you're probably looking at Waterloo as well Uh, there's a lot of property there John Chen will gladly sell you one of the Blackberry buildings (laughs) exactly (laughs) come on down and oh by the way you want to uh, load up our version of Android on your devices too while you're at it I mean please. Israel says kind of random, but seeing the Indonesian market get these updates to BBM, what would it take to get SMS integration? See, this is why we need to get Alex set up with like a little soundboard so he could play like womp, womp, womp and like other little little cutesy yeah. stuff through the show because what would it take BlackBerry looking that direction? <laughs> you know, I just feel like they're not. They're, what do you think, Alex? For SMS integration, I mean, in, if their major markets are places like Indonesia, SMS in Indonesia, like that's one of the markets that you know people aren't really using much SMS because they're all using things like BBM. Like that's why BBM is as big as it is in Indonesia 
because SMS like carriers are charging you per sending messages and that's why WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger got as big as they are and that's why BBM is as big as it is in Indonesia. There's no reason for BlackBerry to figure out SMS integration aside from maybe the US. The US is one of the last places that SMS integration is this big deal. So there, there's no re if they're focusing on Indonesia, there's that's not at all on the roadmap. This is another interesting comment from one of our patrons. It says, it occurs to me that BlackBerry's device investment, in-house or outsourced, is coming to an end. I believe that the real consumer device strategy should have been just enhancing their current products via software, peripherals, etc. The Passport is an amazing device. It's running anything Android uh, that can, you know, anything that can run Android for the most part. The things that are going on in Indonesia, the, the VR revolution, that's the focus. And I think he, he brings up a really good point that the market is deviating, so to speak, where the consumer interest is now on all these cool, smart peripherals. I'm sure Alex has had a lot of fun time with his VR headset as of late with his uh, with his Pixel. And Alex, here's a daydream question for you. Yeah. Is there like an APK that I could like rip and use all the daydream stuff? Or is it like tied to the specific phone? Because I, I know think... I can't install it, but... No, I mean, I... I... I think even if you got Daydream installed onto a phone, there's something about phones having to be Daydream um, compatible or Daydream ready. I was reading something about it. I'm not entirely sure. I, I think you need to have a Daydream ready phone, so you can't just throw on Daydream and have it working. Right. Which, which right now is just a Pixel and the Moto line of devices, yeah. which is kind of fitting considering Google's history yeah. with Motorola. Merritt says, I'm finding Android better than I expected. But once on Android, you can only get the most of the platform if you go all Google. Chen was right running the Google. <laughs> Will Google now go to two-tier Android, such as only Pixel can compete with an iPhone, and then there will be two? Uh, I'll let you speak on that one, Alex. Do you think now there is two multiple tiers of Android with the Pixel, or do you think that doesn't really matter? Because I think BlackBerry is now on a tier, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, is, it, is it good to have those different layers so people can kind of pick what they want, or do you wish they all performed at the same peak and then they're competing off the merits of their services? Yeah, I mean, essentially having a market economy and competition forcing Android to get better. So, like, yes, I want Samsung to do really well and build awesome phones and have an awesome, you know, software system modifications to Android because that forces Google to do better. Uh, the, the problem is Google has deep integrations with their services, obviously, so they have unique advantages when dealing with you know, Android as a platform. So being able to do things like have unlimited Google Photos, and Google Photos is kind of like the default photo app in a sense for your Android phone. So now Google and you can to say, and you can use it on iOS too, which is dope. Yeah. So it's like cross device. So it's at, realistically, I think there's in a sense going to be tiers. So it's almost like having yes, there's Apple and then there's Google, and those are the two major competitors, and then you do have lower tiers in BlackBerry, Samsung, and other companies will be there as much as I don't like that because it's not really good for competition at least those lower tiers like you know Samsung and Blackberry may be able to push the tier up and approach Google it's just they're never going to be able to give things like unlimited photos uploads because like that's only going to be a unique Google thing so there's going to going to be tiers in a software base of things but you know hardware and and maybe Blackberry could do their own things with software to make it you know their own better tier than what Google's doing, but I, it is, I, it's tough. It's not well, that's where all, that's where the, all those partnerships need to come into play yeah. too. I said that when, um, you know, the Priv launched, when they basically put out their first Android device, like why to, to make, to make a further incentive for people to buy their devices, why didn't they go to, you know, certain organizations to be able to go ahead and come up with, you know, yes. like why, 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 why wasn't there like a Dropbox enterprise deal for like people yeah. like, you know what I mean? Why wasn't there like a Google Photos buy this device and get three months of free Google Photo storage or three month three free months of Spotify or something like that? Like, yes, like, people buy into those things. Like, yeah, it, it may sound like additional fluff and shit like that, but people buy into those things. That's and and there's there's absolutely no reason as to why BlackBerry couldn't do it with, you know, even 
even on the consumer level or on the enterprise level, because there's several different le- uh, enterprise organizations that they could team up to make it more of an incentive as well. Totally. Like Dropbox Enterprise is just one example, right? Like there's thousands of organizations that that basically meet BlackBerry's ecosystem yeah. when it comes to enterprise offerings, right? So, you know, you could you could have done it for the consumer level, give people three months or six months uh, of Spotify for free or whatever, or, you know, or Dropbox Enterprise or whatever the case may be, right? Uh, that's that's where those partnerships need to come into play. And maybe, maybe that's where they should start knocking on some doors in Waterloo too. Eh? Exactly. Yeah. Waldo42 says, I don't believe that the device investment in-house is coming to an end, which is, again, a total contrast to what one of our other patrons thought. I believe BlackBerry needs to keep its institutional users on stream. In a sense, they are going back to their roots in providing hardware that just works for a purpose if consumers like them now. I think that it's an add-on. Kind of harkening back to what Blaze mentioned earlier. They all also said that Happy Thanksgiving, so Happy Thanksgiving back to you, Vince. I had a nice Thanksgiving. I got real fat. How about you guys? Yeah. Well, I, your Thanksgiving came late. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's Ca- true. Ca- Canadians are so nice, they have it early. <laughs> yeah. Also, Waldo scored a silver edition passport after many tries. Nice. Yes, very nice. Can you guys comment on options to BlackBerry Link? I have talked to Namory about another app, possibly, and he says it's hard to copy proprietary software from BlackBerry. And this is something I think that goes back to Alex's, what was it, your aunt who realized, oh, oh man, I run, I run Google, not BlackBerry, right? And knowing that there's a difference between the two, not just, oh, it looks different, right? Uh, anything you could do in BlackBerry Link, you can do on Google and Android through the cloud in one way or another. You know, you can do device backups and store it to your Google account and or store it to your drive and do all of those same things. Having a desktop hardware solution, there are third-party apps available that you can do a semblance of that where you plug it in and move the data, you know, manually, but all that's done wirelessly these days. BlackBerry Link was nice until it stopped working, right, Blaze? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um Remote I mean, desktop. You know, it, it comes down to like, what do you want to do with BlackBerry Link? I mean, I agree that pretty much everything that you can do on BlackBerry Link is available in some sort of way on Android, anyways. It's just it, it. The only thing about it is that it's not it's not necessarily packaged up in one you know desktop solution to be able to say here download this. You do have to take the time to explore the options that are available to you and what may work for you. And I think I think part of the problem when it comes to, um, you know, specifically backups is that Google doesn't necessarily offer you a way to be able to go ahead and interact with those backups. So people tend to think that a backup doesn't exist. But a backup does exist. Anytime that you switch devices and stuff like that, you get offered to restore your device or set it up as a new device, just like you would like on an iPhone as well. Um, it's just that you know all that stuff goes to Google Drive. You don't have any actual interactivity with it, um, so you can't you can't like previous where on on previous BlackBerry devices you can't just back up your contacts. You know you don't have like a selective restore option, but all of those things are essentially backed up. It's just that it's not not necessarily visible to the end user. And you know, in, in that respect, there's I can see where it would be problematic, especially where there's uh, I guess I guess you could say a lot of quote unquote older mentality when it comes to that. People like to physically see their backups. People like to control their backups. And you know, that's you kind of you kind of like James said, get over it because it's it's all in the cloud now. And I, I totally get that people may not appreciate that as much. Or they don't feel as secure with that, but at the same time, you know, you, you bought an Android device, you kind of have to have to deal with what comes with an Android device, and think about where where that Android device came from. If BlackBerry felt as though that there was some sort of security risk implemented within the solutions that were being offered by way of those backup solutions, then you know, obviously they wouldn't have gone ahead and put out an Android device to that extent 
or they would at least go ahead and create their own solution for it. So I think I think part of it is just basically getting over over the older mentality that you don't necessarily always have full control of those things. Um, and I get it. A lot of people may not agree with that, but it's one of those things where you, you're either going to either to either adopt it or you're going to try and find something else. But then when you try and find something else, that becomes problematic as well. What are you going to do? Go to an iPhone? Well, deal with iCloud then, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> don't buy a 16 gigabyte iPhone. <laughs> like one of the older versions. I don't think they even sell them anymore. But yeah, Blaze is right. You kind of have to grow with the market right now. You you, you got to go and experience new things. And I think in a roundabout way, by the time you come back to look at BlackBerry, you're going to see BlackBerry in a good place. I think, as Alex said earlier about pushing the bar and, and BlackBerry kind of testing Google, I think in a security sense, they're absolutely doing yeah. that already. You know, I think as well, in a in a sense of being vanilla, you know, and that's a broad term in, in and of itself, but I think keeping a very minimalistic unintrusive experience it is again something that they're kind of pushing on them it's like hey google you know why don't you have pop-up widgets on your launcher you know it's like you know why aren't you doing things that maybe are a hint more productive yeah you've got this but we've got that and again it's just different strokes for different folks let's wrap this up we'll go to intermission guys and jump on this after show we're going to talk a little bit about marty beard's post uh relative to samsung buying Harmon and how that actually has zero effect on blackberry <laughs> for the most part uh, and then we'll talk about the oddities of Cuban X being owned by Harmon back in the day. What was that, like 2010? Goodness gracious. We'll go back in time. Come join us on the after show. If you want access, you can hit us up on Patreon. I'm sure Alex will throw it up there for you. <laughs> Until next week, guys, wait on our DTEC 60 review, please. I'm going to take just as long as Blaze did. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good night. Peace. Bye. Bye. Uh...